now we're watching Thomas versus uh, Roman and it's calibrated blast versus Ractus Evoke. Oak. Yeah. Thomas at 7 1, uh, Roman at 6 1 1, picking up a draw over the course of the tournament. Yeah, so how big is, is having a draw that early? I mean, that's, I mean, day one. It is undesirable. You want to avoid that at uh, all costs. Well, maybe not all costs. I guess there's costs <laughs> I would not be willing to pay. All reasonable <laughs> costs. Yeah, fair enough. And now we see Roman starting with Marsh Flats. And if you see Marsh Flats, what are you thinking about? My thoughts immediately go Stoneforge Mystic. I'm just honestly, first gut reaction. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's scam. Like, scam tends to play oh, any combination of, of black fetches. It does not even have to be Bloodstained Mire times four. It might be just any black fetches because they get to fetch. Uh, they often don't play the mountain, so it's just, just swamps and various kinds of swamps to fetch. Okay, so now you see Marsh Floods into a Trium. And which one is that? Uh, that's a very good question. Um... I'm Let betting it's Xander's launch. Xander's launch is your bet. And that, yeah, maybe Xander's launch, maybe in Datha. But yeah, no, look, no, look Xander, look Xander, yeah. So now, probably as the opponent, I'm expecting like maybe five color bring to light type of shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Somewhere there. Uh, but yeah, if I'm Tom Tomash. Uh, I'm completely thrown off. Yeah, we'll see what is going to be the turn to play. A Temple Garden accompanying uh, Xander's launch, so it's a full domain mana base already by turn two. All it, five colors available. It could still be basically any soup type of deck. Uh, there are and many variants. It's a Scion of Draco, so a four, two mana, four, four. Yeah, so now again, Thomas thinking, okay, probably kind of zoo ish strategy. I want to prioritize removal. Uh, but I won't break through that Draco with, with Ragavan. Uh, yep, the hand that Tomash is holding does not match up particularly well against this threat of Sign of Draco. So what can we do here? Yeah, 10 to 4 for creature, proving proving really, really strong. Seems like we are pitching Grief to take a look at uh, the hand of Roman. And we see Fury, calibrated blast. Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Verdant Catacomb. So let's take a look at Calibrated Blast together. Canister, what does it do and why would you play that in a, in a shell with Fable of the Mirror Breaker? Well, it reveals the cards from the top of your library until you hit a spell. And then you proceed to deal the amount of damage equal to the mana value of the revealed spell. Now, if you somehow manipulate a really expensive spell on the top of your deck, this, is, this can be like free... 3 mana deal 12 or deal 15 if you hit Emrak with the Eon Sun, right? Technically. So, what uh, Roman is doing here is uh, he's trying to use Witch's Cottage to put back something like Sign of Draco on the top of his deck and then proceed to cast uh, Calibrated Blast, dealing a whooping 12 damage. Besides that, it seems like uh, we are trying to just attack and deal the remaining damages with uh, Scions, Fables, and uh, various other means of attacking. So it seems like it's a domain midrangey deck with just calibrated blast on top of that, rather yep. than a blast deck with fair elements, right? Yep. And so now, now which is Cottage cares about... Uh, Entering untapped, and that only is achieved when there are swamps. Temple Garden doesn't help, so we are a bit far from being able to uh, enable that. Yeah, we need an extra one. Notably, not deploying the um, Bowmaster's end of turn for Tomas, interestingly. Choosing to keep them and respond with them to the Fable trigger, perhaps? It is possible, yeah. And then we would target face, ta target the shaman to potentially kill it off. What would you do here? Yeah, you can target the shaman, and then if any amount of cards get looted, then the shaman is gonna die. So that play makes perfect sense. Yep, I like that. I would have done the same. Now, Valentine. 
Oh, just says, okay, <laughs> no discard bashing treasure. It's a suicide attack with one damage marked on it. Can he just be blocked by the army? Yeah, but I assume try, the, but... the mana is key here. Probably Hardcast Fury. Just follow up with a land post combat. Hardcast Fury seems like a very good line here. Also, notably, a Calibrated Blast has, has flashback, so. Yeah, you could just wait on it and then use it when it's more. Yeah, convenient. so even if it is discarded, it's still available. And there's another point. This actually wasn't wow. an attack that would be a suicide attack. That is because Sign of Draco has oh. an ability. It grants uh, every creature a keyword depending on the the color. On the color. So I believe red creatures get uh, first, first strike. strike. First strike would be great at that's a very killing good, of the blocker. So that's a very good observation there by Canister, uh, a popular streamer of the Magic the Gathering card game. You all could also say that I'm an accomplished uh, professional player, but... Uh, you could, but would I? Well, you're not, you're not doing that yet. Yeah. <laughs> so now we see Fable of the Mirror coming down, one counter, make a Shaman. Uh, now Valentin's uh, Fable flips, and now you're slowly approaching the territory of being able to copy Fury. And just, no, one side of the wrath every single turn. Yeah, the Fury has both Fast Strike and Double Strike. Just like as a piece of trivia. So what you're saying is that these abil abilities stack? No, I don't... No, but it is factually true that it does have both yeah, of them. Yeah, it does, it does seem it. like, you know, Valentin's deck just, you know, played a pretty good, normal, zoo-like game, right? You just play the Sign of Draco and... Uh, Tomash's cards never lined up well against it, and then just Fable into Fury, and that's just a game plan on its own, right? Yeah, we could just remove Calibrated Blast from the name uh, at this point, because it's yeah, it's completely not about Calibrated Blast, but this might be actually the reason why this deck does so well. Yeah, right? it's, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's just a backup plan. It's like a an extra thing. A, you know, if it deals some damage to you through normal, game, normal gameplay, then there is always the possibility of uh, just suddenly spiking like 12 damage. Yep, now we see Terminate on the Fury, which is just a temporary measure because Valentin is pulling ahead every single turn, more and more. Uh, we'll see what he has got in the bank. There's one card which I can't make out. Uh, there's also three mana, something's being searched up that will be fourth, and a treasure fifth. So maybe we will be seeing some calibrated blast uh, flashbacks. Yeah, we could just flashback the calibrated blast and just see what's gonna happen. Like something is gonna happen. Indeed. Oh wow. Well, that's just a fury. So that's brings uh, Tomash down to one life point. So probably no blasting is gonna be necessary. Draw. Yeah, and Tomash scoops them up. Roman, Calibrated Blast, 6-1-1, one, and one, up a game in the final round of today. Anybody know what Mango's playing? Mango is playing uh, Teamer Adventures, and I'll, I'll let you just guess what that means. And he's our, uh, on he's our backup, backup match, actually. actually. Yeah, he's X and 2, so he might be locked, he might not, uh, playing a win and in. And so, sideboarding. Uh, so we don't really know what Roman's deck con contains. It could be anything, but but probably Tomash's deck is more stock. So, based on what you've seen, what kind of approach would you like to take as Evoke? Probably just want to keep you know removal in my deck. Maybe put some graveyard hay into my deck if I have any that uh, makes sense, like a Nile spell bomb uh, or something to would disrupt the. Calibrated Blast a little bit, but I wouldn't worry too much about it, and uh, you really can't do all that much about it in some other ways. So, uh, if you don't have access to Gregor's Hate, I guess you're just gonna have to suffer through the Calibrated Blast, sometimes doming you for 12 damages. Yeah, so we will be playing kind of a similar plan. Uh, we still want to put pressure early on, but because Valentin is an Elena binding deck, an Agro Fury might not cut it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's much better to have a grief, uh, disruptive grief turn one. Yeah, Thomas had access to Blood Moons. It makes sense to maybe try to go that route and try to mana screw the uh, 
domain based deck at the same time you know it's because it's both domain based and also is a witch's cottage yeah now like it's not maybe fully clear, but I guess if you are familiar with the archetype of Calibrated Blast, you, you should be aware that it is trying to play as many swamps as possible, only a few non-swamps in the deck, uh, I guess. <clears throat> but that means it's going to be hit pretty hard by Blood Moon. Crucially, you've got three cards that are perfectly castable uh, under Blood Moon, and that's Fable of the Mirror Breaker, that enables mana and, and some card selection. Fury, which we have seen, so Tomash would also have to back up this Blood Moon with proper pressure Assuredly. and Calibrated Blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, Roman could just go like, blast you, blast you, flashback, and this might just be enough, depending on the composition of the deck and the... Yeah, you could just hire Harold, hit a 12 cost card, like, sure. Yeah, that is 12 damage, so you could just, you could just go blast, blast, like blast, flashback, blast, and that's 12 yeah. plus 12. You could also do stuff like turn three, blast your creature as just as a removal, fable, fury. Um, so so there, there are options to play from under the Blood Moon, certainly. Uh, which doesn't mean you'd like to build Blood Moon. Oh, there's also, yeah, there's also a uh, possibility of just clean removal like Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. So Blood Moon might not be lights out. And I'm curious if that was Roman's conscious decision to build a five color deck in such a way that it's not called to blood one completely could be could have been conscious could have been unconscious yeah, so now presenting the deck shuffle the opponent's deck draw the opening seven hopefully keep and yeah Tomas on the play with ragdos evoke playing uh, not not really for day two because he's locked, but playing for a really prime position day two. Yeah, of course, eight records in a tournament like this do carry over. It is just one continuous tournament is just split into two days for logistic purposes. So you want to get the best score possible on day one. Going 8-1 is very desirable. Oh, and I see a potential turn one fury uh, with a trick. But the downside is that you would get rid of Bloodman, which we've just talked uh, about. I think there's and a bigger blood. Well, no, there's two lands. And there is no, no. There's one land. There's the Bloodstain Maya. Okay. There's yes. Doughty Maya Fable. I think Trick Fury Trick Bloodman. Yes, I have misread Undying Evil as a Black Cliff Cliffs. So yeah, so this is a one one lander that goes all in on the Fury and gets rid of a Bloodman. So. You have to weigh your options there. Now, if Roman's hand contains a binding, you'd you'd match up pretty poorly. But I can't make out what's in the Roman's hand. I mean, you could keep the blood one, right? Just the issue is that you can't cast it because they one lander. So, oh, there is. Fa oh, sorry. Oh, I, I, you I know, mean, you could pitch Fable of the Mirror Breaker or Blood Moon. Probably, you know, the the upside is pretty high. If you rip two lands in a row, then you you go turn one Fury and to turn two a Void Walker and to turn three. A fable, you need just one hit from that fury to for the void Rocker and fable to be uh, big threats, but uh, of course, it's not a guarantee. Oh, to yeah, work out. and I think we see a keep. Uh, I think Ragdos Evoke is not a deck for faint hearted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you need to make decisions like that. You need to go all in on the turn one fury often and keep a one lander while doing it. So, for example, I am a pretty risk averse person. So I just, I just, I just couldn't bring myself to doing that because yeah. I would be like, uh, hoping the top of my deck decides if I win this game or not. Actually, match, right? So, yeah. but that's a matter of preference. I'd rather have more control, and that's why you'll see me more with uh, preordain rather than uh, an undead trick. And we do see Fury pitching. Pitching. Suspense is real. Brr, drums. Uh, pitching Fable, Trick, and now we'll see if Roman has got either Leyline Binding or his own Fury. Because he could just go Fury and then you 2 4 3 the opponent. Yeah, let's see. Just okay. passing. So after Indatha, uh, what shock would you have to play to turn on the Delirium? You'd if need you mean domain, Blue Red domain would be Steam Vents, yes. So we will see if... I mean, you could also play just a, a land turn 2 and pay 2 for... Yes. Uh, 
Leyland Binding. Ragavan was a decent pickup as a non land because at least it's a castable that's that steamrolls. It, it is action and it does let you cast your other cards even if like the fury yeah. gets dealt with you still get to uh, answer the other thing so yeah and you, you have still, to you still yeah you still get to keep your other threat the ragavan so that's really nice yeah and roman now has to decide which one to get rid of well does he have any removal yeah yeah but if, he, if he has no removal then he's really dead in the water and then thomas says well i might as well have mulligan to four i, I would still have won this game Ran and six, well. Well, I mean, okay, if this goes face, let's see. Yeah, if this goes face, no. Roman's down to one, and he can never get rid of the Fury, right? Yeah, that seems like a problem. Unless you go like, oh no, you, you can't. Well, you need to gain life somehow, right? Uh, so. Can't you ley line binding the aura and then kill Fury? Sure, but then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of hoops. All right, at one life, Shadow of Mortality costs uh, two mana, so how big is that feature again? It's a 7-7 seven, seven threat. It's a 7-7, seven, seven. So, so unfortunately, uh, that puts Roman dead on board, assuming yeah. the Fury just attacks. Yeah. Uh, th yeah, this is a weird game. This is a weird game indeed. Attack you? I, th I think even Tomasz says, you know, remember about the trigger. And he says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dead. So, pretty uneventful. Yeah, Just a pretty quick game. Like, going all in on the Fury and then getting rewarded for that. There's been a relatively high amount of uh, answers in Roman's deck, but uh, not enough to draw them on time, seems like. Yep, yep. Uh, had, Roman, had Roman had a single Fury, that would have flipped the dynamic. Yeah, Fury or a binding would have uh, saved him so much life, and then he would have been able to participate in the game. Oh yeah, that, that's a good phrase, I think. Yeah, Rowan barely participated in that game of Magic, mm, but I think this is what Ragnaros Evoke is all about, right? Punishing, punishing opponents, and just kind of cheesing out games. When it doesn't do anything, it just revert to a mid-range plan. And yes, it's all about participating more than your opponent. Okay, now with with the risk of uh, disabling yourself from participating because you keep these one landers, had it been leyline bound, you would be barely playing the game yourself. So this is just like gonna you know, let's see who's not participating. Yes. So then the player who participated more wins the game. Yes. Yeah. Which, Which is generally true. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like we are in full agreement uh, here. We've seen the players uh, make some cyborg. Uh, Changes, play draw. Oftentimes you need to, you know, take into account how do you want to sideboard on the play, on the draw. It changes a little bit. You want to, you know, oftentimes cards that are much better on the play are like Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer, and uh, some others. So no surprise that we see players tinkering with their decks a little bit, preparing for game three. So nowadays, in 2023 modern, how relevant is the classic approach of I want to be more aggressive and like on the play and more reactive on the draw. More it's still as true as ever, I feel. It's still the case that your opponent just has m less mana available to answer your plays when you're starting the game, right? So naturally, you also have less mana to develop their plays. So they just need to answer yours. That's just how it's going to be. And that's how things uh, line up for the most part. So. Uh, a turn one Ragavan on the play and turn one Ragavan on the draw is just like an entirely different animal, so... Yeah. Well, I guess it's the same animal, it's still a monkey, but... I mean, it's also interesting enough that Ragavan is so much better than on the play and on the draw that sometimes you don't even have it on the draw in your deck. Yeah, exactly. But you do on the play, as you mentioned previously, so... This is how much of a disparity there is, but you have to be able to recognize it and adjust your deck accordingly in the way yes. you play. Uh, because if you don't, you'll be just angry that you had your Ragavan turn one, but you cannot attack through a no, a one-one creature, something. So now we see on Tomasz's side, ah, he hit his hand. I think I saw Ragavan, Bowmasters, a couple of lands there. Mm -hmm. Shieldred is the pickup. So this kind of is a concession to a bit more longer mid-range game, I guess. Seems like. 
it's it's a character that can survive Fury too with five points of toughness. So that is a yeah. pretty nice aspect of uh, Shield at the Apocalypse. Ooh, and turn one. So do you play Thoughtseize or do you play Ragavan for it to die to a Renan 6? Yeah, there's Renan 6, which is worrisome. There is also just the fact that uh, Territorial Kavu or Sign of Draco, they just block Ragavan, right? So. And actually, if you look at the curve, Tomas might not even have a good time to deploy Ragavan because turn two he'll play probably Delta Devoid Void with Voidwalker, mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe turn three is the earliest. Um, he could uh, dash Ragavan in on turn two to ramp up to Shield Return three, uh, which is not doable in the face of the Bolt we've just seen, but uh, in the vacuum at least. Yeah, this is like exactly what we were talking about, right? Bef between games, just in play on full display. Uh, Ragavan like being worse enough on the draw that uh, Tomas just didn't even want to play him, play him, play yep. it. Yeah. In the meantime, Roman picking up a Sanders launch once again. Uh, up the beanstalk is the draw, isn't it? Yeah, that's a solid one. That's a good one to to cast right now. The only unfortunate thing is that he cannot back this up with some kind of evoke elemental to have both interaction and draw. But if this game devolves into a uh, mid-range fiest, ah, then I think he's advantaged. Yeah, at some point he will be able to. I assume. I hope so. I hope at some point he's going to be able to trigger it. So in the, his deck, what triggers it is Scion of Draco that we have seen, Shadow of Mortality that we have seen, uh, Fury that we have seen, and that's it, from what we've seen. Uh, assuming he plays Lane and Binding, which would be very natural in this type of deck, that would also trigger... Uh, so that's actually plenty of cards, although cards like Shadow of Mortality is not really meant to be hardcast. But if it was... Uh, well, you do when you are presented with an opportunity, I guess. It's not oh. going to be very common, it's pretty expensive uh, otherwise. So now we see Grief was the pickup, and I see Bowmasters, Dati Voidwalker, Dash Ragavan. Three options there, uh, with a potential Grief uh, alongside it. What are your thoughts? Would you just Bowmaster try to punish the Beanstalk, or...? Well... So, Dashing Ragavan doesn't seem like it moves you forward too much, except that you get your treasure, which means that you get to play your Shieldred sooner. So yeah. that's nice. If you want to play Bowmaster to punish the Beanstalk, then we could do that. There is no guarantee he's going to get triggered. If we want to play Duffy Voidwalker into Grief, which we could want, like maybe you want to pitch it, maybe not. It's not entirely clear. It seems like Tomas opts to keep his resources. He has seen uh, Roman's hand just a turn ago, and it was not... This didn't warrant uh, to get discarded once again, it seems like. Yeah, and Roman can now deploy Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but he can also bolt the Dutty Voidwalker. There are multiple options. Here is also very interesting how different is Tomash's deck on the player. I mean, in this game and the previous game, right? <clears throat> it was yep. like an all in glass can in the previous game, and now Ooh, it's the Blood a Moon. Familiar deck. You yourself have only a single swamp. Um, you might go. Would you grieve first? Because I think it probably it's better to grieve first with only a single uh, mountain uh, swamp, anyways. To see if the if he has drawn any answer to that Blood Moon and then Blood Moon. Yeah, you could grieve pitching Shieldred. Although Ragavan is a source of uh, of mana, right? Of mana, so you get to maybe cast your cards later on. And again, like you don't really want to spew resources from what the games seemed like. You still might need to fight off against Fables and Furies, so it's not like the Blood Moon just locks uh, Roman entirely, right? If there, yeah, exactly. If there is no grief as a follow up, Roman will just hard cast the Fable that he picked up the previous turn, and arguably he'd be ahead. And he now fetches not a basic swamp or a basic plains, he fetches sh uh, Godless Shrine. Interesting. With the intention. Of playing something? Floating. Is that a Bosejo? Ye yeah, it must be, yeah. Yep. Bosejo, who endures? So, 
let me ask you a question, which is a very popular question. So, Tomasz plays Bloodman. Roman yes. floats mana, including white, and says, okay, I'll just lay line binding the Bloodman. Can I do that? Can I not? How would you comment on that? Well, assuming that, like, we see the lands right now, right? Then yeah. All of the Roman's lands would be mountains, which mo would mean that Leyline Binding, at the moment that the Blood Moon is actually in play, would cost five mana. So you would need five mana to do that. You couldn't uh, use the full domain discount because all of the land types would no longer be there. Yeah, exactly. They would they they would have already changed into mountains. So this trick uh, doesn't really work that but, well. Yeah, that makes Leyline Binding not such a good Blood Moon answer. Typically costs more mana, and you need your planes fetched in ad in advance. Yeah. Now the Boseju, uh, the Boseju effect allowed Tomas to actually search up a land and play Ragavan, so at least he doesn't get uh, empty-handed out of this exchange tempo-wise. Uh, now we see cottage, which is an actual cottage, uh, rather than mountain. Yep. Two mana. Draco trigger. Yeah. Sign of Draco, draw a card. Tef it's a I... fairy time raveler. Makes sense. Yeah, so so in this particular spot, what are the advantages of playing Draco instead of a Fable? Fable would be more mana efficient or more mana, well, productive. Well, the advantage is that you get a better blocker and you get to draw a card. So perhaps you can make, you can play some extra cards if you draw them off, off of your beanstalk, but certainly. I would have been tempted to play the Fable. And now an interesting spot that Tomasz decides to grief instead of shield, shield reading. So this will just wait for, for a good moment. Now you can grief away, for example, the fairy, uh, so that Valentin has no interaction against you. Um, you could take Fable, and then the fairy, uh, the fairy can come down because we've got white from Godless Shrine and blue for Xander's Lounge. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, and so far we have not seen the calibrated blast angle too much, so it looks like a five color zoo slash omnath deck. Yeah, that is the case. What is the exact uh, condition on Shadow of Mort Mortality? Do you remember? Yes. Let Let me Let me just double check. Shadow of Mortality says that your life total, if your life total is less than your static life total. This spell costs X less, where X is the difference. And because it's a 13 black black, uh, you'd have to be at 7 to make it a black black creature. All right. right. Yeah. Thank so you, right thank now, you for giving me the example, because you lost me when you read the ability out loud. So, so right now, basically, Shadow of Mortality is 6 cheaper, which would still be a 9 mana. Yeah. So that's because it's 13 black or black. Which 13 is, black black. Which is this, a pretty, this is a pretty, pretty exp expensive one. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're playing a swamp. Bash in. Um. Well. That seems like the fairy time raveler mana. Yeah, he's going to ravel. Ooh la la, oh I like that. That's welcome to Valia Town. Bounce my own creature, draw a card, play the Draco as a blocker, essentially giving it a vigilance and yeah. drawing a card again. You, we could also understand that the fairy activation has uh, effectively deal for damage, draw a card, so like a Boros Charm that wow. can't rips. Boros Charm plus uh, Reach Through Mists. Yeah, plus. The fairy who's a city of solitude, I guess. That's that's a lot of card advantage. So now we see Werther getting rid of the artifact creature. Yeah, tearing away the sign of Draco. Okay, so now we see Dotty, Ragavan, and Grief on the left side, and just above the Beanstalk on the right side, uh, with the word just pulling a lot of weight there. So Roman, because he has drawn so many cards, and he's, ab he's probably about to draw many cards, he just needs to stay alive. 
he just needs to stabilize the game. Um, So, Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt gets rid of the Buffy Voidwalker. Play a land. Let's fetch go down to 8. Staring down 5 power. Oh, and that is a shock. That is pretty ballsy. Yeah, that drops him to 8. So maybe line. like a. Yuri would be really decent here, uh, but it is Shadow of Mortality, uh, draw a card, and there was a Calibrated Blast, but it is uncastable right now. So if Roman had less life, he would actually go Shadow plus Blast. Mm -hmm. He drew something. How much is that 11? So a Lucky Blast still just kind of wins on the spot, right? And uh, we are deploying the shield red. I mean, it gets tricky for for Valentin. Yeah. So he uh, he seemed to be in a really good position, but Tomas was just just decided to keep deploying creatures of magic with power and toughness, and it seems to be doing the job. So, is that upkeep to prevent shield red damage? Are we going to flip a Scion of Draco? Territorial Cavu, just two damage. All right, two damage is still two <laughs> damage. So, get to shoot the Grief. What's the next step, though? We take a draw. Lose two life to shield red, the Apocalypse. So we, we are down to five life. White mana. Leyline binding. Draw a card. Yep. Which is pretty relevant. We also have bow masters for that needed reach. So now with Mozidlaj's uh, shield red gone. Roman is just at one life, which uh, means that he's in range of those bowmasters. Boop! Just try to kill you. Finishing the game. And, and hand shake. Bowmash moves on to eight and one in a great position for tomorrow. And Valentin six, two and one might still sneak in. Yeah. Although I have to admit, for all the 